What is up guys, Sub Zarek here for game three of the Chinese Regional Grand Finals. I just wanted to show you guys the standings going into this. If you are just now joining us, we have Huan Mei in first. This is YGQF, Tunga in third, and Shiza AK in fourth, and then a few other players. It is checkmate format. They have to reach 18 points and then win a game to actually win this tournament. So it's still anyone's game. Huan Mei in an amazing spot, Shunga in a good spot, and this YGQF player who I don't really know too much about them, but they are in a good spot as well. Um, so yeah, let's see. That is Keza. I have it I have it all down. I know who every person is. That's YGQF. Um, that's obviously Flancy. But yeah, I have all, I have all the names down, I think, now. Um, that person is Atran, I believe. Yes, I think so. I, I think I got it all down. Um, you know, it's hard because I don't speak Chinese, but I'm, I'm recognizing the characters. I'm doing my best. All right, so as usual, we're going to pop over to all the boards. Wow, Zeke's plus Giant spell opener looks like for a really, really good Seraphine opener. This also potential uh, from Chunga's board, potential two-star Talia looks pretty nice. Got an Astral opener here. From that's Hushin. No, that's not Hushin. Fuck. Well, look, we'll we'll figure it out. Anyway, first augment. <laughs> look, look, it's not that easy. First augment. What are the standouts here? Preparation for Flancy, a built different potentially over here, and this player is that's Hushin. So potential built different for Hushin. Um, Warrior Crest probably not. All of these seem pretty reasonable. Cybernetic uplink. Um. Or a Celestial Blessing for Juan Mei. Um, plus one Guardian, potentially, for YGQF. Yeah, there's there's a lot of interesting stuff. Oh, okay, yeah, so this is Atran. Um, okay, so yeah, a lot of interesting stuff that could be taken. Yes, we we shall see. Immediately double trouble slammed. Also, that's really interesting. Um, through twos? Oh, my God. Through twos into the two-star Braum. Braum is one of the highest roll units possible from true twos i would say in the entire game so that is insanely good could potentially play into a guardians game from here with like a guardless samed on braum that is such an insane spot for a tran to be in um he's a ak took knife's edge looking to just play like a, a siphon shoyu game probably lance you re-rolled really you reroll better together, or not better together, um, built diff. I'm so shocked about that. I heard that some, uh, like, regions aside from NA don't like built diff as much as NA does, but, like, I feel like most people in NA just, just slap pick this built diff. I'm so shocked at that reroll, actually. Um, like we said, the true twos there. The uh, Guardian Crest makes perfect sense to me, especially with two Guardians, or, or just with one already. He got that off the Guardian Crest, right? Uh, Celestial Blessing, very reasonable. And here, ooh, wait, what was that top left augment, actually? Electro charge maybe? Electro charge is the most obvious. Yeah, okay, fair enough. All right, let's take me out of the center. All right, online with... I gotta look at my cheat sheet. Hushin, but now we're already to Flancy. <laughs> it's too hard. Okay, so we can see the augments that everyone took here. Let me move a little bit so you can see those. Um, but yeah, we, we basically already talked through all of them, so I'm not gonna give it to you. No, you, you, you should know already. And if you don't, you can just pause there. It is Evoker Namzi and Executioner as the Mirage on board with Flancy's early board with a double trouble. Um, Giant's Bold Bow could be a very, very good and with this um, Ser or Senna too, it could be a very good um, Dark Flight game is what I imagined with double trouble usually, but we'll see. There's other stuff that could potentially be played. But yeah, look at this insanely gross spot. I think Gargoyles is even a reasonable slam there. We also have Gwinsu slammed here for Shunga with the um, Cybernetic Uplinks. I mean, that seems like a very reasonable angle to play Siphon you. You might have two people angling Siphon show you here. We'll see. Uh, even this uh, even this person, uh, Keza, could end up playing uh, Siphon show you as well with the uh, uplink. Oh, shit. That's not Keza. I need to... I have too many... Wait, no. That is Keza. I, I nailed it. Okay. Yeah, that, that's Keza. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that, that's Keza. Okay. They're fighting. I'm getting it together. When are, we, when are they going to hire me to cast... Oh, my God. What an interesting shop. I don't think you actually... Is this? Weeps. I just... I don't think you actually give it like this five astral shop. This is like the old astral shops. Like, can you even pivot board? Like, do you want to pivot board? I'm pretty sure uh, Hushin, yeah. Hushin is just like all in on playing a uh, Seraphian game from this spot. Um, 
So you, you don't really need to do this, but it, it's such a funny shop, honestly. Like, Astral's a bit more of a bait. Like, if Astral reroll was good, I'd, like, that would be just pivot into Astral reroll and play it, but I don't think it's very good. She's like, okay, uh, in a pretty good spot with the, um, the, the Nidalee with the BT and the Nice Edge. He's going to take, like, 50 damage here, actually. Surprised. But, look, as is every single time when you fight against Huanmei, Huanmei is level 5 at 2-3. Is he, is he full 3-streaking? Let's see, where is he? No, he's only on a 2-streak. Okay, he's been slacking a little bit. He lost the first fight. Um, but yeah, pretty much the usual sus usual suspects here. Wow, this is a really good spot for uh, Atran, right? He has all of his Astrals 2-starred with the true 2s. Did he sell the Braum? Or is he just not playing it because he wanted to fit mages in? I'm actually interested if he sold the Braum, because I think Braum is so strong. But it's also like really a grief to keep 6 gold sitting on your bench like that. Oh, and it's another Determined Investor game. The Guardian's pet here already with four Guardian for YGQF. Scary, scary stuff. He could very easily top four again this game, but he has slammed some really interesting items. Usually with Guardian, you want to play into like a, De a Guardian Deja angle uh, into eventually like a Guardian Asol angle, but he slammed PG and Zeke's here. I mean, I guess what else can you slam with those item components? But like with Guardian's pet, what are you going to do? Theoretically, you could play those late game and just a guardian board, but it's not like great. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. Very, very interesting spot. Um, okay, so I, I can finally take a breath. I feel like with a lot of these, I'm just whoosh, whoosh, just spinning, spinning out of control. Um, but we were on board with Juan May for a second. He had lagoons in. Now we're back on board with Hu Shin. Yes. Who? Oh my! Wait, he had double Zeke's right because he started sword, um, belt belt. What an insane spot. Double Zeke's with um, the shell. And the shell is going to be so, so good in this lobby. I wonder if he, like, if he scouted the other augments before taking shell. I mean, shell's really good regardless. Um, but the fact that we have, like, multiple people who are angling for Siphon show you probably, like, almost every comp in this lobby is going to be AD now that I think about it. Because the double trouble person is probably going to be AD. We also have this. Uh, speaking of crazy stuff there's a seraphine 2 on shunga's board that's a bit crazy to me i didn't even get this and the fact that he built it and is still i mean he's so poor right he's 20 gold but i mean it's not bad i i mean surely you you really consider just playing a seraphine comp from this spot right with seraphine 2 you could stick with your original plan of just playing scythe and show you but yeah oh my god he levels here for the twitch i think it's really reasonable to level there and twitch is like probably the best unit that you can put in I guess we could look back and look at his bench and see if there's anything better. You could even consider adding like um this this um the Zeri. I I'm thinking about adding the Zeri here, and then you can sell these two units two units and still make uh ten. Because like if you do this, or still make twenty, right? Because if you do this, you can't make twenty unless you want to sell like this, this, and then like Lyra maybe. But I mean uh, the extra attack speed to the entire board is really really big, especially with the Seraphian. Like, this is by far the strongest board, so, like, I would honestly just, like, sell the, the Zyra here and chill with that board and make 20. I think making 20 is pretty important, though. All right. I'm bored with Shiza AK. As the, uh, the Renan slammed, it's actually a reasonable item. I was looking at stats the other day. I think it's actually more of a reasonable item on, um, like, Shioyu than I thought it was. Also, we have triple Zeke's there on the other side. How insane is that? Uh, Flancy's the double trouble angle. All right. Let's move me back to the middle so you can see everything. And then let's see what gets picked. Really quick picks coming out here. It's silver tier, so nothing too crazy. Uh, two Celestial Blessings, an Electro Charge, another uh, uh, Implants, a Tiny Titans, another Electro Charge. Prep 1 is big. And ooh, look what we got here. We have a little Future Sight angle. Look at that. I mean, you think if anything... Future Sight is very, very good in these high elo lobbies because scouting is so important, or not even high elo, you know, the highest of all the elos pro play. Um, but yeah, I think Future Sight is, is much better when, you know, you're scouting infinite. The problem is they took out flicker scouting. So if you scout someone's board, they, they can tell that you're scouting them. So that's kind of scary. Oh, shit. I did not even realize this, by the way. We just pivoted over to their board. This is this is Atran, right? I'm scanning over my cheat sheet to make sure. Uh, yeah, this is Atran. Atran's legit playing astro reroll he had all those early astral two stars right and he actually just sent it the fuck down at three one probably 
for Vlad 3 and Skarner 3. Oh my god. That's really interesting. With the true twos opener. Because with true twos, he did get the um the extra Vlad. I was freaking out about the Braum, but he was actually really interested because he got another Vlad. He got a, a Vlad 2 for free. So he's actually just gonna go Astro Reroll here with no offensive item slammed yet, right? Looking to maybe play Lux. Really, really cool. I don't see a lot of people playing this angle, but I think it's it's quite good. And what's his astral star level he has in, by the way? Because that's big. Three, six, ten already. Ten is a really, really important breakpoint in astral star level. You get a lot more there. He gets in the second Italy, but that doesn't matter. Um, wait, did he go six there actually? Now that I did, he just send it to six there to put the Nidalee in. He did, right? Interesting. I mean, yeah, you're probably just gonna hit the Nidalee already. So having another Nidalee in is is fine. Um, that's interesting though. All right, on board with Juan May, looking maybe for a Kaiser reroll angle. It looks like, and okay, on board with Flancy, the double trouble. So yeah, he is definitely looking to play a dark flight angle. Love the fact that he is sacking this Titan's Resolve because he hasn't hit Zeke's yet. But I don't love the fact that he hasn't seen Zeke's yet. Obviously, the Last Whisper is an amazing slam. I'm actually curious what the Titans goes on later because he's double trouble. I guess it has to go on Rel. Because he doesn't really, he doesn't want to play a um, a Swain in this spot. Double that would normally go on Swain, but Swain takes up two slots that could just be doubled up uh, units. You really want to play like Aphelios, Aphelios, Rel, Rel, and then um, some other Cannoneers. Like, um, it, it probably at level seven wants to be Aphelios, Aphelios, Rel, Rel, Graves, Graves, and then um, like a Zeri, or even probably just the, the Senna because you have to sack one. Um, so I'm actually curious what the Titans end up going on. When it could be like, I mean, that's bow and chain. Those are really good components. All right, on board with YGQF, um, who hit that early itis. All right, and I mean, this spot for Hushin is so nutty. Also, because the Zeke has 124 Lagoon stacks already, isn't he just guaranteed a top four if he can find like one Graves and one Pantheon? I feel like, yeah. He's also so, like, because of that, yeah, I guess he's not so, he's like pretty rich though. Already holding onto a Zyra pair, and yeah, I mean, oh, he's almost pre level to seven. Yeah, his spot is illegally good. And speaking of which, we're watching um, a roll down here from Atran, right? Yeah. Atran's rolling down here. Oh, he's still digging for three stars. Wait, why was he rolling there, actually? Now that I look at it, what was his gold at? I guess we only saw like the end of his roll. Like, he's rolling it down to 10 here, just hoping to find Nidalee, I guess, and more. Um, more luxes. Only five luxes right now. I have to imagine this is a lux reroll angle, but I guess we'll see. They're not the best items for lux. You can put some stuff on Varus, but Varus 3 is very, very far off, whereas lux is pretty reasonable. Oh, he slammed IE on lux, by the way. I didn't even realize that until now. He slammed IE on lux. All right, this spot looks really sus to me. I, I love preparation as an augment, but when you're behind, it's really, really scary. Um... Wait, he hit a Deja early though. Okay, no, he's he's actually totally fucked. His his spot's actually illegally good. It, without this Deja, I think his spot doesn't look that great. I'm actually surprised it doesn't uh, prep the Itis as well. Uh, oh no, you can't prep the Itis because you need to have Itis in so that you can get an extra stack on your German investor. Well, that's sad. But I mean, we have a fully prepped Deja here. Oh my god, this spot is illegal. Just needs one, um, like, Archangels for Deja and this game. Archangels and, like, a healing augment, right? Because what were his augments? It was Guardian Crest and... Oh, yeah, and Prep, obviously. If he gets, like, a CB as his final augment... Let's let's keep our eye on this. This is um, YGQF. He was also doing... He was in second in the overall score, right? When I pulled up the score sheet earlier. So this, this is a player who could win. If he does well enough in this game... Um, I still have the score sheet open. Yeah, he's got 12 points. If he, if he wins this game or gets second or even third this game, he'll be at potential checkpoint. Um, so, or checkmate. Um, so that's really insane. All right. The roll down for Hushin. Found the Pantheon. No graves yet. Just using uh, Seraphine, or not Seraphine Senna to hold the graves items. A level 740 gold there. And his spot is so good. Very two already. Yeah. At least he doesn't get more dog and augments, which we are about to find out. Let's look at the third augment pick for everybody. This is huge. It'll win, actually. Really interesting here. 
Always a fun one. For a presence, not often the best. I'm actually, like, not that blown away by a lot of these. We'll see, I mean, like, CB is definitely good. Mage cap here for the, the reroll player. This is Ascension for the Guardian. Oh, that's pretty insane. This is Kezu, though. This isn't who we're, this isn't YGQF. Um, there's, there's, so there's actually two Guardian boards. Um, Kezu ended up building this, uh, this Guardian spat. That's kind of interesting. Component crab pack? Really? Okay. There's a chain vest in there. I saw that. Metal mage. Sunfire board. Very, very reasonable in this comp. All right. And we are looking at the last augment pick. Tunga took Axiom Arc. Um, and yeah, because he hit that early Seraphine, he's just going to say, he said, fuck it. I am playing the Seraphine comp. Already has five Seraphines. Almost a Graves 2. If he can hit Graves 2, his spot will be really, really. Oh, and there it is. There's Graves 2. His items on Graves are quite reasonable. And now we pivot over to another Seraphine player. Um, but sadly, uh, Hushin has not actually hit a single Graves yet. He's sitting on 50 gold here. I wonder if he's saying, I'm just going to go fast 8 and roll down because he doesn't want to roll that much more gold at level 7. Kind of scary, though. No Graves. He is at least relatively healthy, right? 70 HP. Oh my god, he naturals it. That's so gross. And and this is like almost best. Renan's and Hodge are insanely good in slot. Best in slot, Graves might be Renan's Hodge edge of night so really really good spot there and speaking of really good spots keza is also in an insanely good spot uh this is the other guardian spat player who has guardian spat six guardians as a archangels and uh ascension i mean yeah you can't actually imagine a better guardian deja spot honestly just needs one more item for deja and then his spot will be illegal could be gunblade could be like jg or we already have a uh, executioner so you don't really want jg so maybe Gunblade. But yeah, only 37 HP. It could be uh Giant Slayer as well. Looks like that's what he picked up, right? With that bow. Okay. I mean, we'll see. We could see what he ends up building. Um, but I mean Giant Slayer seems very reasonable if he just makes the call that he doesn't need the healing. I remember, yeah, his first time that's uh I wish I could see what he slammed there. Alright. But I mean, this is a pretty sick board to be online with. The Astral Reroll player. Rolling it down, trying to Oh, he skipped a he he actually ended up skipping a uh a Varus there. That's rough. Oh, wow. Wait, he didn't hit anything. He just sent it to level up so that he could finish his board, right? Because um, it's so nice to, to get in the, the fifth mage here. That's really scary, though, that he missed out on Lux and everything. But, I mean, oh, he took Zoe off Carousel. Yeah, I mean, Zoe's insane here. All right, so he's going to have to hit. hope he just hits Lux at level 7. It's not that unreasonable. I think this is actually a really good play to push levels here. I think a lot of worse players would just sit and hope to hit Lux here. But I mean, you can hit Lux out of the orbs and you can also just hit Lux on seven. Like, look at this. Ugh, that was a really close fight versus what I would say is an insanely strong board. Okay. On board with, I don't actually, I can't tell because they're showing like the crowd that they have. Okay, she's an AK who has this really good um, board. Also, Anmei is rolling it down for a Kaisa board. Hit, wait, what the hell? Actually ended up hitting Nasus 3. That's something you don't see every day in the Kaisa board. He just had enough Nasuses, so he sat with it. That's pretty cool. Alright, and he, he has the Determined Investor flipped. So it's a relatively good spot. Uh, Board-wise, the problem is he is at 25 HP. This is what we saw last game from the Kaisa reroll player hitting, but just ended up dying out with not enough HP. It'll be interesting to see if Wanmei can stabilize, because he's one of those, pe those people right at the top, right? Yo, this is another Guardian spat that he passed up there. I'm actually, wait, I really want to look at the problem is that, like, you have Guardian spat and then your items have to be like Z0, but he could potentially go like an 8 Guardian angle, maybe? Yeah, because he doesn't have like Nasus in, right? Oh, well, the problem is fitting it. You have to fit 8 Guardian in at 9, right? Because Idas takes two slots. So. Oh, wait, no, you can't ever fit it in unless you get plus one Guardian because these are each taking up two slots. So at 9, you only fit 7 units in. So you can't go 8 Guardian. Okay. You would be able to just for free get rid of the sack unit who's kind of worthless, but you'd have to take this. It's interesting, though. I would really consider taking this, just making Guardian Spats easier up. But I think he really wants uh, a, an item on Idis here. Sunfire could be reasonable. I'm thinking more like uh, a Wormogs. How bad is this? It's not that good. 
That's not that bad. Ugh. Would you take this? I mean, Sunfire is pretty reasonable. The thing is RFC, like RFC Rakan's not that bad either. I'm actually really curious to see if he takes this. I would really seriously consider taking it. Would I end up taking this? I'm often a person who's just like, yeah, this is good enough, so I'd probably take it. The other, other issues, you have like a hanging item component, which is kind of rough. Okay, yeah, he takes it. I think it's pretty reasonable. Junga, once again, in such an insane spot. Just natural the Seraphine too, and like almost natural the Graves too. Oh, Keza, or not Keza, Hushin ended up hitting Graves too. And he's he's got, I, I think this is legit best in slot Graves. This is like close to best in slot Pantheon. I'm not surprised if uh, he wins the lobby. The only issue is his augments, right? Um, like these are two non-combat augments, so his board's not gonna be as capped as other people. But his, his items look insane actually almost perfect uh, and then you can just put the rod on like zach for uh shell value all right speaking of good spots Lancy's spot doesn't look half bad either she's a k has a good spot as like i think i mean this is just what happens when you watch some of the best players in the world play they've all put together good boards the question is whose board is weakest and who is going to end up losing because like like half of these boards could honestly win in like a, an na challenger lobby like i think a lot, a lot of these boards could do insane work. Um, the biggest issue is HP, right? Um, for some of these players, like that's what it's gonna come down to at the end of the day. Um, like Juan May there at 12 HP, Shiza AK at 20. Oh, th this spot is so good. 37 HP and streaking. Let's let's look at the board. Wait, I was curious to see what last item. Okay, so we did end up going Giants there last item. I think that's quite reasonable. You already have a defensive item in the Guardian's bat. You don't really need another defensive item. You just want full offense here. Executioner gives you even more damage. Six Guardian for Mirage in with the, this, of course. And then just the Jason to, to buff up your guys a little bit more. Yeah, what an insane spot. But see, speaking of insane spots, like she's AK is a fully upgraded board. I just feel like every time I hit this fully upgraded board, I still lose to people with cap board. Like, can you get through this front line? I guess is the biggest thing. Oh, and the Zephyr is so crucial. I'm interested to see if he can actually get through this front line. The bard is really nice. The ascension is, of course, big. Deja is alive, but this is big scaling from the Guardian Deja. And look at that shield. Oh my god. All right, she's like, okay, tried there. Oh, look at this bottom three 11 HP, 12 HP, 17. Anyone can die. Gets the Soraka. That's nice. Especially for just trying to like farm out a better placement. Because he really, really doesn't want to go ace here. I mean, at the end of the day, if we look at the score sheet earlier, there's no way he's making checkmate this game. So he just has to try to give himself enough points that he can make checkmate next game so that he can get to 18 points. So the nice thing about the checkmate point, you can just say, okay, I low roll this game, whatever. As long as I get like top two next game, I'll be in checkmate anyway. So it's no diff, um, but it's a bit rough. And that is, that's Wame. Oh, it's Flancy dead? Uh, all the, the things swapping around really fucked with me. Okay, Flancy died there. Pull up the score sheet over here, but Flancy is having a horrible day. He went eighth in uh, the last game, and he went eighth this game. So I don't think Flancy's going to be winning this tournament. He is in an insanely bad spot. Like, it seems almost impossible for him to get to checkmate unless everyone else stumbles. But Flancy might be just out from his first three performances. I think he went fifth, eighth, eighth. Rough for Flancy, who is a, a really high-ranked player on the ladder. I wanted to VOD review some of his games. I just never got to it. Um, but I think he's still a very solid player, but... Maybe, I mean, maybe he can, like, I don't know exactly. I know, obviously, like, first place goes to world, but I don't know how they pick the other, like, four, if it, if they just go down the top five or not. But maybe he can manage to do better. She's a K1 HP, Juan May 6. Oh, my God. Oh, and YGQF is also potentially in the bottom four. And he, like, these are, these are like, a lot of the top players bought for him, except for Flancy. Flancy's just in a bad spot. Like, Ushin in first, not someone who we saw doing that well. I mean, YGQ sports so good though. Um, 18 HP, like that that's at least two lives. We see Keza here potentially looking for the uh, A Soul pivot. I mean, that's what you do with this comp, right? Use Dage as your guardian for a little while, and eventually you're gonna pivot to the A Soul as your carry, because A Soul is an insanely good scaling AP carry. So yeah, I love this a lot. I think this is really nice. Oh my god, she's AK dead. And Juan May dead. Oh, Juan May out in seventh. She's AK out in sixth. Well, this really, really shakes up uh, the chances of everybody for winning. This is really, really cool to see. So sad for the god of TFT, Juan May. 
Uh, we still have Shunga uh, in the top four. I'm still rooting for Shunga. He's he's my man. So I'm down for Shunga to win. Um, and we're, we see Hushin actually just rolling it the fuck down at nine here. Just trying to find something to add to the board. All right. All right. A, a lot of really interesting stuff. I'm like honestly overwhelmed watching these games because there's so much that's going on. But we are just plowing through the action. I could watch them on normal speed. That'd probably help me, but... That's too slow. That's too slow to VOD review something, right? You just want high-octane gameplay. Especially if I was pausing. These videos would be 10 years long. Alright. But a, a really good win for YGQF. Um, Keza is just hard win streaking with... It was still that insane Guardian sport. I wonder if he's pivoted yet. One Seraphine off Seraphine 3 for Shunga. Alright. He's only at one gold. He's just rolling it down to zero every round. He's at 19 HP. His augments are really nice, though. And his items are quite... His Graves items could be better, honestly. They're they're good enough, but they're not, like, uber broken. Oh, wait. I totally forgot about the Astral player, by the way. That's that's them, right? Um, that was... Atran was Astral's, I think? Is the name enough for me? Oh, why you QF going out in fifth? Okay. I, I want to pivot over to the Astral board. Unless they die. But it wasn't she's AK, and I don't think it was Hwame. Yeah, I think it's uh I think it's H run. Um so I guess we'll see. We pivot over, but there it looks like they're at 15 HP. Alright, so as we've seen in most of the, the games earlier today, Seraphine is doing work. Oh, okay, we have Astrals versus this really capped board. This really capped Keza board where he ended up hitting the A Soul too. I don't know if Astrals can beat that. They did manage to hit Lux 3, but yeah, it's Oh, it's just far too much. I wonder if they're dead from here. Barely killed anything. If the two dragons live, I think they might be dead. Ah, really, really cool game from Atran. The astral rerolls, but just wasn't enough in the end to clutch it out. Another guardian spat for Keza? Oh. What are they going to do with that, right? It's six guardian already. I guess that just allows them to cut another uh, unit for just something better. Yeah, we're on board. Um, wait, I, I did not even see. It was so fast. Uh, yeah, I think they just... Yeah, they ended up cutting probably a Guardian for that Soraka that's Guardian, right? Yep, that's exactly it. Oh, no, they just get six Guardian in here. They didn't have six Guardian. It was just four Guardian with a lot of Mystics in now. But now they can fit in six Guardian over R2. Wow. Are these surprised here? I'd be interested to see if they actually play the Soraka over Bard 2. We're the last two. Oh, but it doesn't actually matter. Because Hushin and Chunga are both AD comps. They're both the Seraphine Graves comp. And Bard is so good into that comp, just with the AoE CC. So, I don't know. I would actually really consider playing the Bard there. Unless the Sorak is really good for some reason that I can't think of. I mean, it helps sell out the board some more, surely. But, yeah. But this is Keza's board. They ended up... Uh, yeah, they're still playing the Soraka, okay. Um... And you have to play the Seraphine for Evoker, right? So, yeah. They are playing, actually playing the Soraka here. I mean, I think... I don't know. The, the AoE CC from Bard seems really big to me. But, yeah. They're they're over it. They just think the Soraka is that good. Interesting. Um, Because, like, in a lot of these late-game fights, Soraka is not going to matter that much. Uh, does the Suo2 come over uh, Soraka? Just for... um, I mean, the Mirage doesn't matter that much. They... They really like the Soraka and actually just frontline the Soraka here. I mean, it does, it definitely makes the team last longer. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm just curious because the comp is so tanky already. Oh, Yasuo getting a backline here is really bad for Keza. Keza might actually lose this game to uh, Hushin. I mean, Hushin's board, like I said, was insane. Almost perfect items. You'd think that Keza's board is like more capped. I feel like that was kind of a positioning issue, but I guess we'll see. Picking for what here? Soraka 3? Not sure it's going to happen. That's 6 Sorakas, but yeah, 0 H, zero, 0 gold. Not much else to hit. Alright, let's see how these last few fights go. I think positioning is really crucial here. You want, ideally, the Graves and especially the Pantheon to get stuck on your front line. You don't want them to leave any way for them to get around the Itis. If they get around the Itis, you're in a terrible spot. Hodge Soraka is hilarious to me. All right. I mean, this seems like a very reasonable way. Like, how, how are they ever getting around this? Maybe Graves can walk around the entire team the way he's doing over here. Bard ult's quite annoying. Ida's still holding 
holding the line. Oh, but Idis is dead. There's just too much. Oh. oh, there's just so much damage. But they actually did manage to bypass the Idis. All right, and that is a first for Keza. Uh, or Hushin, Hushin, sorry. Keza, one second. Um, really interesting game. Absolute tuber with um, a really, really cool seeing the Guardian comp perform so well uh, in that, that final fight. Um, and just like the rest of the game. Absolutely, if you guys like this video, like, comment, subscribe, check out my Twitch down below. Thank you, thank you, thank you.